Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 17th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick diary from Jan today about phishing and some of the phishing emails that we are getting at the handler's uh, email address. Now, phishing, of course, is essentially a numbers game. And what Jan is going into here in this uh, quick note is that, well, uh, attackers are going to just send the same phishing email with various uh, subject lines, various messages, trying to somehow convince you to either click on the link or, of course, also trying to bypass various uh, filter uh, techniques. This particular uh, fish, as so often these days, was hosted on Firebase Storage, uh, the uh, Google uh, Cloud service that has become sort of one of the favorite spots for hosting uh, phishing HTML. And just as I'm recording this, I checked it out and sure enough, the phishing page is still available showing how resilient a host Firebase storage is. Let me have an update to Microsoft's Patch Tuesday, one of the vulnerabilities being patched here. CVE 2021-3695-8 was one of the last remaining print nightmare vulnerabilities. And if you remember, the nature of this vulnerability was that the normal users were able to install drivers. And now this final patch does prevent all driver installs from users, which apparently is now causing problems with some network printers. Bleeping Computer has a good summary of this and the option you have is essentially uninstall the patch or set a specific uh, registry key. There's a copy files policy key that you may set to one and this will enable copy files again. So users will be able to install their print drivers and uh, you are of course also still vulnerable to print nightmare in this case, but probably better to set the registry setting than uninstall the patch. This issue uh, depends on the exact printer and print driver you're using. Not all of them need that uh, copy of files directive. So if you don't experience any problems, then just uh, let it be. And uh, hopefully your printer will be fine with this updated restriction. And yes, it finally happened. Not sure why it took so long, but apparently Windows malware is now taking advantage of the Linux subsystem for Windows. Uh, this uh, Linux subsystem allows you to run native Linux ELF binaries on Windows, which of course may not raise any anti-malware warnings because typically ELF isn't running on Windows. I guess we'll see what anti-malware vendors will do, but likely they'll have to pay more attention to these ELF binaries on Windows. There are also some Python variants of uh, these exploits, but of course, Python malware has been around on Windows for quite a while. And continued integration platform Travis CI suffered from an interesting vulnerability that was now patched that may have leaked uh, secrets. This vulnerability only manifested itself if a user would fork a public repository and then during the build process, the secrets that this fork was not supposed to see may have been briefly visible. Apparently what Travis CI is doing here is that they're encrypting these secrets. So good for them. They did the right thing here. But of course, during the build process, they have to briefly expose those secrets and that's when they became accessible to the user who forked the original public repository. Overall, the exposure should be fairly limited, but of course you definitely should patch and uh, Travis CI in their security bulletin always so recommends that you probably should rotate the tokens. And again, this only affected public repositories, not private ones, and only if the public repository was forked. 
And Lenovo released a security bulletin identifying a new vulnerability, CVE 2021-3723, in the integrated management module for its legacy IBM System 6 servers. Support for these servers ended at the end of 2019 and Lenovo will not release a patch. So they're essentially just recommending to discontinue the use of this integrated management module. And Patrick Wardle, who is of course well known as an Apple security researcher, has found a malware that claims to be a version of iTerm 2 and apparently also other valid and widely used applications. The theme here is uh, pretty standard. It looks like a valid piece of software. iTerm2 is not available in the App Store. You usually download it via the respective GitHub page. But in this case, a Trojanized version of the software is being offered. And as a user, of course, you may not recognize it as malicious because it's digitally signed with a valid Apple developer signature. Uh, this particular certificate has been revoked by now, but of course there was plenty of time for victims to pick up the fake application. While this malicious version was active, it appears to have mainly targeted users in China. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.